Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to the Millionaire Network Marketer podcast today. I am so excited to have Brent Attaway on. He is an expert at sales and marketing funnels. And actually, between him and his team, he has built almost 800 sales funnels. So I know that he has some valuable advice for us if you're a network marketer or not, of how to attract leads, bring them into a sales funnel, warm up our relationship with them, and eventually lead to more sales. So welcome, Brent. We're excited to have you. All right. Thanks, Lisa. It's good to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, yeah. Um, the easy way to put it is I help coaches and consultants build a six and seven, seven figure business by simply building an online presence, using marketing funnels, using different strategies that way, but really doing it in 10 to 15 hours a week as a coach. So that's my goal is helping build a business that has a lifestyle behind it as well, so. I love that because you know a lot of people preach, you know, it's all about the hustle, it's all about working right now, like so you don't have to work later. But a lot of people feel like they do want to work later. They still want to make an impact. They still want a job doing something and helping people because that becomes um, the thing that they want to do daily. But how do I do that and still have a life? And a lot of people, you know, join either network marketing or their own business and brand and coaching to free up time. So you don't want to replace trading time for money at an employer for trading time for money with yourself. So it's right. great that you're here to help us understand more about that today. Um, yeah. I know Love you it. and I have talked a lot about, um, you know, I trained with Frank Kern and Ryan Lee and just a lot of different marketers in the industry. So I understand sales funnels and I understand the importance for, you know, our listeners and viewers to understand that as well and how much time freedom can um, be created with one. Yeah. And let me clarify too. I certainly work more than 10 and 15 hours a week myself. So it's not necessarily about creating, I only want to work and be lazy, you know, and only work 15 hours a week and just go sit around. It's, I have multiple businesses. So if you're, if you're an entrepreneur type or want to be that way, or you have several ventures you're interested in, it's important to create a business that does not require 40, 60, 80 hours a week in just one income that is taking up all your strength and passion just to get that. So that's, that's really what it's about for me is how do you create that lifestyle? Because I had to create that myself. And for my wife's business, she's a coach. She's a consultant in the fitness and nutrition world. Um, same thing. So mm -hmm. it's more important to understand that than it is to just not working because that's not what it's about for me either. It's, oh, I just want to sit. I, I like taking breaks, <laughs> but I don't love just working 10 to 15 hours a week if I'm wanting to grow and, and maximize the people and um, the, the reach that I have. So mm -hmm. definitely. Um, so let's go through a good starting place, I think, is how would someone who just started network marketing start to create a funnel like it's really actionable here like what would they be able to start doing on their own like facebook page or social presence and start to get a closer relationship by you know kind of capturing those leads as their own yeah and it, before i go into the the how i think it's important to understand too in network marketing um, any business that has the, the old fashioned feel and a lot of people who still push saying you, it has to be belly to belly. It has to be face to face to make a, a business work. I agree that it's more energetic and fun that way. It is. I, if you're a people person and you like networking and you love doing that, um, I'm a little bit of both. I'm a, I'm, I guess I'm more naturally an introvert, but um, if you can get me going and we get on the same level, I love talking. I love the conversation just like anyone else. That said, um, if you're not creating an online business with your network marketing company and creating online leads along with your belly to belly efforts and events and, um, or launch parties or whatever you're going to call it that way, those, 
you're making a big mistake. Let me just put it that way. So it's, it's um, needs to be a combination of both and you can create you uh, and you can testify to this as well. I know you can is because you know several people who build and total all their leads online for their network marketing business or, or the majority at least. Um, my wife and I, we have a balance of both. So it's, it's uh, but most of my backgrounds all online leads and not just in the network marketing space, of course. So it's an interesting concept. So that said, then when you go to build a marketing funnel, it's a lot easier to understand um, how I like to explain it is if you're going to build your business and let's just remove network marketing for a minute and just talk business. A business needs leads. They need to qualify those leads to see who's actually really interested in their product or service. And then they need to close sales. That's what a business needs to stay in business and to have profits and to support whatever. And, and a lot of this is home-based business. So to support your home-based business, to support your lifestyle, all those things. So leads, capture leads, qualify, and then close. And if you're not doing that in a strategic way, belly to belly, then you're not going to do well. If you're not doing it online, you're not going to do well. And so it's just understanding that it's the same whether on, online or offline. And um, when you go to build a business uh, or a marketing funnel, where to start is, is really with the end in mind. Um, as, as cliche as that sounds, but that's really what it is. So what are you trying to accomplish? So uh, Lisa, in your world, when you're trying to um, create a transaction or bring on another business builder or product user, what are you, what is the end in mind for you? Just to give an example. Um, I think it's good to separate those two because I think the funnel would be different. How you talk to someone is different, whether you're approaching them for the business um, or the product. And, you know, I think that's relatable for the people listening. You know, if they can think of, you know, they were probably told at one point to make a list of 100 people they know and think about what they would be best suited for with what their company is offering. So say if part of what your company is offering is weight loss, then they would probably have you think of 10 people that needed to lose weight. Um, and then if say if it was anti-aging, you may think of 10 other people. If it was um, opportunity or business builders, you may think of, you know, 10 or 15 other people that you do uh, services with, like your hairdresser and barber and those types of people that you see on the regular that are already entrepreneurship. And you're like, yeah, they're really social. I think they'd be amazing at this. So it'd be different on how you talk to those people. And the same goes for within your funnel. So let's just take, for example, um, I really think that my esthetician would really be a good match for my business opportunity. Um, and I would talk to her. I would initially initiate the conversation about business. How would we go about um, creating more conversations like that online for attracting a new business builder? Okay, gotcha. So if you're starting with that in, um, end in mind, let's say the new business builder, the, uh, you're, it's going to be the, almost the same steps every time. Like, I, again, if I go back to capture leads, then just qualify them, then close the sale. Close the sale in this case is the end in mind of saying the sale of, yes, I want to be a business builder. Yes, let's get started. Where do I get started? And let's say they're, they're on your team now, right? That's kind of the end in mind for now. Well, if that's the case, then then tracking backwards, we go, well, how do we qualify those um, and find, how do we qualify people when they come into our world? Meaning, how do we know if they're serious? Because when you start opening up online leads, you will not have time to talk to everybody that comes in online. That's the beauty of it is you get a lot more leads than you could just be what I would say knocking doors, right? So you can go knock doors one at a time or you can open it up to the world of the internet and let the leads come into you and qualify. So the, uh, the, for the listeners out there, the two ways really to qualify anybody to buy anything or be interested is their time or their, and or their money. And so let me give you an example. When you're qualifying somebody 
with money. You're simply saying not for your core product or the entry level to your, let's say, um, your sell and let's take it out of network marketing again, just for people to relate. Let's say you're selling a $10,000 thing package, um, for in our world, it's consulting and coaching package. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's say that's your core offer. That's the thing, the end in mind. Well, to qualify somebody, I might be selling a $90 thing, a hundred dollar thing, a 200 or $300 offer to them just to see if they're even serious. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm selling it. For. That is, certainly it's a great value they're going to get. Certainly it's going to help them, but I want to know, are you serious? Because once we start having the conversation further, if you're not willing to spend $300, then I don't want to quite waste my time or your time talking yet. Let's just let you figure that out on your own. And then when you're ready to move forward, let's go. So if they're not willing to just pull out their wallet for that, then mm -hmm. certainly they're not willing to pull it out for $10,000. Okay. Correct. So that's, that's an example of money. Time is interesting because you see a lot of webinars out there these days, right? Yes. So webinars is an awesome tool. Guess what webinars is using out of time and money? It's just using time. They're saying, mm -hmm. if you're willing to get on a webinar, register, show up at a certain time, get reminded of it several times, finally get there, watch it for 30 to an hour and a half, 30 minutes to an hour and a half sometimes, or even longer on some webinars. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Frank Kern. Some of those suckers go like three hours. Um, <laughs> so like that's your time. You're actually showing up and just staying there. Even though I didn't open my wallet for that, if I stayed and I, well, first I registered, then I showed up, then I stayed. How qualified am I to you if that's your webinar compared to I registered but never showed up or right. I didn't even register, right? Right. Now you're committed. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a committed person. And there's what's cool is all the software and tools out there, you don't even have to understand it. Just know that it tracks that. So it tracks if they've registered, if they've showed up, and if they stay and even see your offer. So it's really cool to see. Once you start understanding, my, my end goals in mind is to build a business builder. Um, but I need to see if they even have the time and or money or if they're willing to invest that. You can put things in place, more or less, hoops for people to jump through just to make sure you find the right people for your team. Mm -hmm. One of those best ways is going to be a webinar for network marketing business. That's got to be um, hands down for an online tool. One of the best ways to do it or a simple video. I just call them instant webinars because it really in the end a webinar is just an online video. Mm -hmm. um, it can be recorded. It can be live, but in the end it's just a video. And so they're watching it just like us right now. Mm -hmm. And all they're doing is simply discussing the topics and needs, strategies, maybe some of the challenges they're facing, and show somebody how to get through that. Um, well, in the business, in the network marketing world, you're doing the same thing. Here's the let's just say the top five strategies to build your network marketing business or to make more income at home using X Y Z product. And here's the five pitfalls to avoid when doing this type of business. And then at the end of it, you might have what's called a call to action, which is to jump on a phone call and talk with me about this opportunity. Let's mm -hmm. just say that's your steps in your webinar. Well, if they, get the, if they spend time with you doing that, they are much more qualified and you can automate that whole process with a video and or webinar, um, like a live webinar. And you don't, and now you can reach um, your one person, what you call, what I've learned and what I call one to many. So you're one person and you can reach many people at once now rather than knocking doors or, or belly to belly all the time. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, by the process of belly to belly, it would take me maybe one, two, four contacts. It depends on the person and where they're at on readiness of setting up said meeting and then going to Starbucks and presenting. Mm -hmm. So that process may take half hour, hour, depends on the presentation and also helping them see a vision. Again, it depends on where they're at, but you really allow yourself an hour. So it takes that one-to-one -one and it allows you to put it online and one-to-many is scalable. So you could even draw in hundreds of leads per week that are constantly going through and seeing your presentation. And even leaders in the industry like Eric Worre, 
would say, you know, it matters on how many times did you present this week? Well, then you could actually say, well, you know, a hundred people saw my presentation, 10 of them were serious. That's not bad odds. No, no, that, not at all. In fact, what's fun about webinars and online funnels this way and using a webinar as part of your funnel is going to be the fact, think about um, when you're reaching somebody online, they're watching this presentation of yours. Think about um, the concept, which is very true in network marketing is, is you're only as good as how, how can you be duplicated? Can your mm -hmm. team follow what you're doing? And that is important because otherwise you're just overwhelmed, right? The, the whole principle of if you just are doing everything for your team, you're only going to be able to build so much of a team before you're just the go-to person and you're the one always, just like Eric Wars taught in, in GoPro, right? Is you're the one only going to, um, the, you're the go-to person. Hey, Eric or, or whoever, Lisa, will you present this to my client? Because I think they're really interested. Will you do this? Will you do that? And you're happy to because you want to grow your team, but you're not duplicable, right? So a webinar makes that possible because you create, it doesn't have to be, those who are watching, you don't have to be on camera for a webinar. That is not at all the case. So if you're like afraid of camera, that's not, a, no worries. You're just sharing your screen with slides. And if you take that, you take slides and you record those slides or you give it to your team and say, hey, if you want to record this in your own voice, go for it. Mm -hmm. It's much easier for your team to now duplicate the process you're doing to their own audience, have their own voice, but not have to think of what to say anymore. They, you have the presentation down, it's ready to go. And many, many um, network marketing companies provide those slides for you, mm -hmm. but I feel it's better to personalize it a little more, make it hit home with you, whoever you're presenting to, compared to just it's this corporate -y feel, which always turns people off in the, at the beginning. Right. Um, it's great to be part of the corporation, to have the headquarters and present the logo and the presence, but at first people want to relate at a personal level. So if you can make it feel personal, I think that's going to be your best bet. But that's I agree with you um, because people buy you and not just a product. I mean, that's, they would have already purchased it by now, you know? Yeah. So basically it's their interaction with you. So if you can add slides that actually tell your story and how this product and or service affected your life and you know how it's even transformed your finances and now you're inspiring other people and it becomes bigger than you. It becomes about, do you want to help, you know, a few moms retire this year so and replace their income so they can stay at home with their kids. I mean, that's so fulfilling, you know, so it becomes about something bigger. And then um, I was initially told that, you know, don't do the whole online funnel thing. It's not duplicatable and you want to have a duplicatable business and everything. But I'm like, but I can teach someone how to do a funnel. Like, and it's, to me, that's a, a bigger impact. So say if you taught 10 people how to do a, you know, sales funnel where they weren't having to work as hard at going to do one-to-one -one presentations, um, that's as powerful. So say if they were able to, in a year's time, recruit a couple hundred people into their business center and also taught a few other people how to do the same thing that they're doing, that's much more powerful than if somebody really struggles and only signs up 20 people because that's all they had in their warm market. Yeah. Yeah. No, something, I, what you just said, that's brilliant. And so what you said triggered something in my mind about um, when you're dupli when somebody says, well, it's not duplicatable to have an online um, to build your business online. And it's, I'm like, for me, I'm like, that's the exact opposite. <laughs> That there's so many, maybe, maybe 10 years ago when you had to know programming and you had to like figure that out, but the tools are so easy. They're like, so ever since the concept of apps on your phone came out and apps in general on your computer that you can just download and they work for you, yeah. that's about how simple a lot of this software is now. And so it's more about just like getting the app on your computer, building the little funnel thing with the drag and drop stuff. Yeah. And publish. Now it can get more complicated. I get that. But yes. 
Keeping it simple, that is, that's truly how it is. If you wanna set up a webinar, you record your screen, and it might be this overwhelming process for somebody in their head, how, I don't even know how to push the button and what would I record with and what software do I use and they get lost there. But in the end, if you just can learn how to record your screen with a presentation or take somebody else's recording and just let them install it for you and do it all. So Lisa is my upline, if you will, my leader, and she has this tool for me, I'd be like, Lisa, can you install that on my, well, yeah, I already do that for my client. I mean, for me, I'm like, okay, I'll be on your team. <laughs> because you're going to give me the tools that I need right. to, yeah. to relate um, and not feel all um, corporate feel. So again, um, I definitely believe, I don't, I don't, I know there's people watching that are probably like, wait, no, I want to be the product of a product of the product. I'm not afraid to say my business's yeah. name. I'm not saying that at all. Say mm -hmm. your, you know, who you represent. I'm saying you want to build your own personal brand around this as well, or this personal feel, then you're going to yes. need to, you're going to need to um, put your personal touch to it. And right. so that's, that's the key. So yeah, the, so let me back up to, um, I think to kind of tie this together. So um, we don't leave people hanging is we started with the end in mind. Yes. Saying, okay, we want to build a business builder for in this example. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we can all agree in the end, we're going to need to have a conversation of some sort, personal yes. conversation. And that can be over the phone. It can be via Zoom or whatever software they're using online, um, Skype, whatever it is, right? That's the conversation in person or online they have to have to really discuss it, to decide and make a, to see if you're going to be a good fit for each other and if you can help um, your prospect join your team, right? Right. So that's, that's what needs to happen. Well, if you say this, well, let me see the screen here. So this is over on the right, right? <laughs> so this is the end goal. And here's where you're starting. And here's the webinar right in the between. Okay. Mm -hmm. Webinar is this that qualifies them. This is that says at the end of this webinar, you're going to say simply, um, if I'm presenting this, I'm saying, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're looking at this opportunity to really grow your business, um, your home-based business using XYZ product and really proud of, um, uh, to, that you're here. If you're interested in chatting more, I've reserved some time to chat with people who are really serious about um, looking into this opportunity. You can just click the button and schedule time with me. That's your call to action on your webinar at the end. Now it can be more polished than that and all that fun stuff. I'm just shooting from the hip here. So then they click and then they scheduled that conversation. Now they hit the goal in mind, but the question becomes, how do you get them to the webinar? <laughs> yeah, so, that, so drawing that, it out just like oh, super yeah. scribbled. Like they come in, uh -huh. they go to a web class, and then call me. <laughs> you got it. You got it. <laughs> it's just so simple. So it's just a visual that. for us visual <laughs> learners. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. So now, now that piece over here that we're talking about is that is what's called in the marketing world since we built a lot of funnels. and It's really in the end, it's called a lead magnet. That's the official term, I guess, mm -hmm. in the digital marketing world. But a lead magnet, literally, they made it that name because it it's attracts, magnet, magnetizes, it attracts new leads into your world. Um, and then, then you bring them to the webinar. Now, there's a, there is some ways that you can, um, a lead could just come right to your webinar. You could just say, come to our webinar. But it's, that's really a bigger commitment. If you look at it, I like to compare it to the dating world. Mm -hmm. Asking somebody to come to a webinar right off the bat is like just saying, can I have your phone number? Like right. that same thing. That's very much you're like people are like, unless you like we're friends and I know a friend of a friend, I'm not giving you my phone number. <laughs> like that's right. just happening, right? So same thing in the online marketing world. Unless they know and have a general idea who you are or the opportunity and what it is, why would they register for your webinar right off the bat? They need right. to have an introduction, something small and simple that just piques their interest. That's a lead magnet. Lead magnets so, are made for like five to 10 minutes to consume it. Like that's how, like it's really simple, like little what's on Lisa's mind and what pain is she having right now? And mm -hmm. let me just resolve that in her mind for, with this lead magnet. So if the pain is money and, and it's like pay your bills, then I'm going to show you five simple um five simple online tools to help make five hundred dollars a month 
Mm-hmm. And so they're like, or, and, and that, that I wouldn't say online tools, I'd say five simple home businesses to make $500 a month. And you've seen some of these out there. That's what they're doing. They're just getting a lead. A lead is just a name and an email online in the online world. So anyways, that's where we want to start is, is lead magnet, then webinar, then get, create the conversation. So I just want to kind of point out here where people are actually already doing this because they may be listening to this and see us and be like, uh, lead magnet, attraction marketing, magnetic marketing. I can't do that. But I want to say you already are. So if you're using any form of social media right now, Facebook Live, Periscope, Snapchat, Instagram, you're showing someone a picture into your life and they're able to see you, maybe hear you. It depends on if you're going live or not, and that will form a a closer bond. But all we're saying is at the end of your Facebook Live, if you say, share this, you're already doing a call to action. You're asking someone to do the next step. So say if on your Facebook Live, that was your lead magnet because you're teaching something valuable that's five or 10 minutes long, and you say, so if you'd like to learn more about this, then come to my web class because I'd love to see you there. That's another call to action and allows them to register for said webinar. And that takes them to step two, that then you got their number, you know, for the date. Um, and that allows you to develop a closer relationship with them. So that's all we're talking about when we talk about a lead magnet. It may look like it's on a lead page or it may look like on a page that you're already using online with social media and going live is definitely a, a closer relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So thank you. Uh, uh, great point. They're already doing this. And so yes. the one thing I think that most of the audience is used to is now using social media, right? Yes. So like trying to use that there, it's this big push for, Um, social media and using Facebook live is a big thing right now and any other live Periscope whatever else so um, the key there uh, I just had a discussion with our team um, just this past week and the concept was this was you guys are doing a lot they were saying what was it and and I know this will relate to many people is hey what should we call our next event we're gonna do we're gonna do an event Mm-hmm. It's a live event, local event, announcing it to a crowd and letting, hoping people show up, right? And so we're all like crossing our fingers. Let's have an event show up. And so they're like our, uh, we're not directly, we're part of their team, but we're not going to be part of the event. They're in a whole nother area, okay? So they're in another state. And so it's, we're just discussing events and ideas and titles of events. And then in the end, I was like, so, because for me, my mind, I've just been doing this so long. I'm like, so did you guys, like, get the leads while you're capturing the event? Like, so how do you know who's coming to the event? <laughs> you have them RSVP? Do they just click on a thing on Facebook? So what a lot of people are doing is their answer was, well, on Facebook, they just reply if they're coming. I'm like, oh, no. You know, like, <laughs> so, like but you know what? By the way, if you're starting there, do it. That's fine. If they want to reply, that's fine. It's not like you're doing something wrong. I'm saying all you have to do is do one little extra thing and ask for them to register with a name and an email using some of these simple free free tools that will capture that name and email. Just where you, and we've all done this. We put our name in an email and something confirms and says, hey, here's the thing you asked for, um, whether yeah. it was a download or uh, uh, a tool or software, whatever it is, right? Yes. So, when you ask somebody to register an event, whether webinar or live event, and they're they're on you're on Facebook Live, picture yourself. We're doing a Facebook Live. Hey, great. Hey, by the way, we're ha- holding a live event um, on April first, and it's going to be great. You should get there. You're going to learn how to transform your body and your life, right? Right. Well, if that's the case, what a, you're, how are you going to make sure you can get them there? remind them to attend, remind them why they registered in the first place. Let's say it's a week or two out. Well, people register all the time. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean they're coming. In fact, right. the show up rate is probably less than half. So you really want to use the tools that are available to say, put your name and email here to register an RSVP. Even if it doesn't have to be a paid event. It's just 
RSVP, name and email. And now you have the ability to follow up with them. Even if they don't show up, Lisa, then we get to say, hey, we missed you at the event. We'd love mm -hmm. to have you at our next one. Or hey, um, we're gonna hold a webinar instead. Um, if, you, if that's easier for you to come to. So now you have this follow-up mechanism when if you, you spend all this money, time, and effort, I see people handing out flyers and stuff, yeah. and they never capture a lead ever. Yeah, and then you have, you're have you constantly in this cycle of having to try to capture more leads. You're keeping yourself working all the time. And um, one easy way to actually get a, a solid confirmation is alluding back to what you initially said, people either um, commit with their wallet or their time. And you say if you don't have an email list yet or a service, which I can include in the show notes, some options out there that are really inexpensive to get started. Um, there's even bright. So you can actually make like little ticket sales or something like that. Just have a tiny monetary commitment because if someone pays it forward with like $15 to show up to your live event and they'll get more information from you in that two hours than they would if they hired a personal trainer for a week, then it's worth it for them to go. And they've already, you know, if someone else asked them for plans, which it's easy to kind of flake on something you verbally committed to, you know, um, it depends on, you know, how solid that is that you needed that service that's going on. But if you're like, well, I already paid for the ticket, then you're more apt to go. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what we've done is take the opportunity to do a, what we're calling a transformation tour for our live event. So my wife, Christy is going to go on this tour. Actually, she's on the tour right now and she's actually going around and presenting um, like the home-based parties, if you will, because I know that's very common in network marketing. So we're not leaving out belly to belly, but what we're doing is using an online marketing funnel to get people to register and to your point, pay to show up, to qualify them. And they're paying $19 to, to become part of this challenge. It's not like they have to purchase product, but certainly it's not a hidden thing. There's no like little... Um, shenanigans going on where we're like ha 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 we got you now we're gonna get you into the business opportunity right it's nothing like that at all it's join the challenge and use these products to help enhance the challenge that's it mm -hmm. and so what we're finding is people are loving that because even if they know it's this network marketing background of the product they're not worried about it now they're just mm -hmm. more like no I came here for a transformation you're offering me the solution to help me speed up that transformation and make it easier for me let's do it and so you're not um, worried about that because you're presenting the product first. And so that was our choice on how to use a funnel to get them to qualify them with a paid ticket to the event. And then, then after at the event, they have the choice to buy the product along with their challenge or not. Does that make sense? Awesome. So for the listeners, let's go over specifically how you pulled this off. It, and so it's actionable for them as well. And we'll take it offline in this example and then online and i wanted to go over you know how they would attract more people to their product and or service so um you set up christie's funnel for this transformation tour so what was step one for you step one was just deciding what we we're going to do so meaning what are we offering what okay. When they arrive, what do we do? So let's just assume that's done and they know what they're offering at the tour. So they're like, no, this is exact. This is the agenda of when they arrive. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. So now that we know, and then we had to decide, okay, we're going to sell. Are we going to sell this or not? Are we selling tickets to this or are we, is this free? Cause that's a okay. question. And so we decided to sell it because I'm definitely a believer. I've done both and they both have worked, but I'm a believer in qualifying people um, with at least a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Especially because we're giving out a packet. It costs us some money to print that packet. It's not cheap. It costs us like $12 to print every packet we're giving. Wow. So it's not cheap. You know, so if, if 10 people show up and we hold 10 of these events, right. uh, you know, that starts adding up money. And then if people aren't signing up for product, which not all of them do, then you're mm -hmm. really going in the hole to get these leads. <laughs> right. And these qualified leads. So that's what we decided to do. 
And then the next decision was, okay, now we have our event planned. We know we're charging for it. How do we get people there? Okay. How <laughs> so, did you get people there? Yeah. So what we've done is all social media. I haven't even run an ad yet. So no paid mm -hmm. advertising yet. Great. Which I would not recommend you, you ignore that. I'm just trying. I like testing stuff because I'm a marketing freak. So <laughs> I'm just testing. I'm just testing. Let's see how well this goes with just doing no paid ads. Christy is doing some Facebook lives and then her regular posting that she's always doing. And then on not every one of the posts, but on the one on her Facebook live, she's reminding people that um, the live event is coming. And then also, by the way, a lot of her Facebook lives, she's again, she's not like somebody that has for, so for those listening, that's like they've done a Facebook live and one person shows up to listen. Okay. That happens to everyone. Okay. <laughs> First of all, and then two, that's okay because they're recorded and people can watch later. Mm -hmm. the point is, is she's just doing it and inviting everybody possible anytime she can. And then what we've done to get the most traffic there is actually reach out to people we know who are interested in their own transformation and just simply saying, would you like to be the host of this? And Ooh, that's because, good. because we've positioned it as the transformation tour, people are a little more like excited to be part of the tour. Right. Yes. And so they're like, Oh cool. Somebody's coming to town. I know who Christy is. Uh, some know well, who, really well who Christy is. They're already her clients. So, but I know a lot of people don't have that luxury of having clients already. So let's, it doesn't have to be your client. It can be a friend, it can be a family member, or it can just be somebody who you've met even on social media and you say, we're going to do this event. Um, so for us, we're saying we're coming. So she just got back from Phoenix um, two, two nights ago and there were 12 people at one of the events and then there was like five at the next event. So not huge numbers, right? Right. But she was able to add uh, four, five, six people to her team, Yay. not just not just product users, but to her team, because she was she won. She qualified them. They had to pay to play, right? And then they they show up, mm -hmm. and they're now they've paid. They've showed up. They're they're both giving their time and their money. A person who is already has momentum towards commitment like that, they're the best person to ask a bigger commitment. You don't yeah. stop asking. Most people stop. Oh, I've already asked for your money. I'm not going to ask you to do anything else. Mm -hmm. And they act like that's a big deal. When right. you look at, if you look at anything that we do, I'm a big Apple guy. I mean, I have purchased so much Apple crap. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. so like I have the MacBook, I have my watch, I have my phone, I have everything possible. I have the iPad Pro, the big one, then I have a regular iPad. And then I got the iPad mini and I just got all these things. I don't need all that. But Apple's not afraid to ask me to keep buying it. Right. And so it's the same thing. A buyer is a buyer is a buyer or a mm -hmm. person in momentum will stay in momentum. <laughs> so don't be afraid to ask them to commit to one more thing while they're there at your event or while they're on your webinar, whatever you're choosing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're getting people there is simply reaching out and asking people and then to host. And then we reward them with fun things and, um, when we show up, we bring them a gift and we do things to surprise them and make it feel awesome and then get a picture with them and say, Hey, we just hosted this event with X, Y, Z. We're so excited. Thank you for letting us. And guess what happens when we're posting that other people say, can I host an event? Uh huh. So now we start this momentum towards the next event and now more people will show up and more people and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's our strategy of what we're doing right now. It's proving to work. We're just getting started though. So I'm not going to say, Hey, we've done this for months and months and it's our number one strategy. Right. And that's what's working right now for us. Um, and we plan on once we get the momentum going, just like a concert tour, once you come through a city mm -hmm. and you come back, your next concert's always bigger. Yes. So we're going to come through a wave of cities in our area and then we're going to pause and take a break and rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we're going to do it again with the notion with the intention of like having more people at the next one. And so we'll revisit with the same hosts and they love it. Every person that's done the host so far is just on fire. They're like our best, our best team builders or clients like buying the product. That's so, great. Um, you know, yeah. It gives them that accountability and responsibility right off the bat. 
and they're stepping up into that position. Um, so at your actual event, are you teaching? Are you giving like free value? And then kind of presenting like, hey, if you were really serious about transforming, you know, for 16 weeks, we have this option available to help you faster. Yeah, exactly. So um, we're, so in this case, we're, they're paying. So we're giving them um, the packet. So I don't have one in front of me, but um, it, it says transformation tour kickoff event. Mm -hmm. And it comes with their workout calendar in this case, because it's more fitness, nutrition based, um, body based, if you will. Because mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got your um, nutrition plan calendar. So here's what to eat and when to eat it. Here's what workouts to do and when to do them. And then here's everything in between if you want to customize it. Um, here are the concepts and the foundational things you want to follow. Um, so we're teaching them great content, and it's also in their packet. Mm -hmm. And then at the back of the packet is, hey, do you want to go deeper and get faster results? Um, and while we're presenting it, they're walk, looking through that and we're presenting it and we're telling them to turn towards that page towards the end. Um, and we're saying, if you would like to speed up your results, these are some of my favorite products to use. Mm -hmm. This is why, and this is how they're getting results for me and my clients. So if you're really wanting to do this and you want a faster, easier path, then this is the way to go. So yeah, there's no, None of the weird um, non-compliant stuff that people get in mess with, you know, and start saying this changed our life and totally healed my cancer because you can't do that. You know, yeah. like you can't, you can't do any of that stuff. No company can claim that they're going to get in trouble. And so we keep it really clean and mm -hmm. keep it really on point of the transformation that they're looking for. And mm -hmm. that it can help them. so that's how we present it. It's really soft. There's no hard pitch at the end. There's no awkward thing going on that mm -hmm. people are afraid of that I've been afraid of I've been afraid of every time I'm like are they gonna take it awkward here that because I have never I haven't always been in network marketing so it gets right. scary when you feel like because um, I think all of us or a lot of us have had that experience where it was awkward when it was presented to us yeah so we're wondering if we're coming across the same way right now because now right. we do this business and now we're wondering is this gonna come across awkward or desperate or weird Right, but I think by creating a different experience for people, it's really having them have a second look at network marketing. And that's what, you know, I hope that all of the listeners can do, whether it's, whether you're in network marketing or not, maybe you're in real estate sales, maybe you're in some form of sales, there's a stigma that goes with a sales transaction. And it's just really being authentic and trustworthy and out to help people. So if you come across that way, that's the message that's going to be relayed. And it's not this weirdness, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then what's interesting is that um, a couple of things, you're a marketer, but um, one of the biggest funnels that you have is kind of a hybrid. You're using online to attract people to it. And then um, your wife is going in person to talk to these people, which makes it more real for them. Um, it, they get to decide there if they know, like, and trust her. Right. And, um, and then if she goes back on tour in that same city, you know, they say the average amount of time that people need to see us before they will hand us their credit card is seven times. So I'm sure that in-person interaction really uh, narrows that down to just a couple of times. Yeah. No, I, I love it. Yes. The one thing too, that I, I know, and this has happened in set, this happens in any business when you have that momentum going is something to point out with these events is, is you're questioning, well, can I do that? Or can I teach my team to go on tour? Yes. And the, the real answer is no, that's not a very duplicate uh, or duplicable. Man, that word's hard to say. I know. Um, process, right? So I have to just mumble through it. The duplicable uh, process. <laughs> <Isn't it tight>? <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's, but here's the key. Here's what is, what they are able to duplicate is the presentation. Mm -hmm. So the same presentation Christy's using, that is not her personal, it, it, it's personal to her but anyone can do that presentation. Mm -hmm. She uses the company's tools to do that too, because she knows 
kind of the monkey see monkey do business. Like yeah. if your host is one of your best business builders or wants to be, and mm -hmm. they see you presenting with the tools that you didn't even make, they're going to feel more confident that they can do that too. They're like, Oh, they're just using the standard tools. Right. So that's what she does. That's the strategy there. But here's the, here's the whole strategy. If you're even thinking about doing kind of this immersion experience of diving in head first and saying, I'm going to go on tour or I'm going to do a lot of events in a little bit of amount of time. Even if it's just, I say tour, let's just say tour your own city in several little pieces of your city going and meeting at coffee houses or at your home or at friends homes even if you're just doing that when you spend a lot of time it takes a lot of energy you mm -hmm. can't that is not a sustainable business christy and i know that so what we're doing is pushing and then resting it's called sprinting okay so you go on a sprint and then you rest and what happens is like i said uh, based off of the people who are ho being the host now they're seeing that they can duplicate it and when you come back They've watched you once, now they've watched you twice, and now you invite them to start doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot easier for them to be like, I've seen this now, even if they've only seen it once. Um, I think I can do this. And then you're able to, and then if you're a great leader and you have the time to do it, you're able to actually come and support them on their turn. Mm -hmm. and, and start building, because really in the end, most of our businesses can become a million and $2 million business by just building a good 10 to 15 amazing builders. Right, it, it is true actually. The people that I've heard on stage within the organization that we're in, um, most of them can attribute their business back to about 11 people that are making up most of their income and their million dollar earners a year, um, which is a big deal. You know, that's, that's a big amount of uh, residual passive income um, from really teaching others and it just tells you it's a numbers thing. So, you know, maybe they did have a thousand conversations over the last six years. Um, and it could have been on bigger platforms like attracting, you know, 20 people to a room or something like that, or doing a Facebook live. Now you can have 1.2 thousand viewers, you know, yeah. Um, it's just really how you want to, uh, attract those people in, but you know, you have to realize that a certain percentage of those will fall off and it doesn't mean that your business is failing. It just means that that's regular attrition for a business. And then there's certain people that are just going to rise up out of that as leaders and want to do and see a vision like you. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's always amazes me that it really is. It's, it's about a dozen people who make all the difference on your team. So, mm -hmm. um, actually, and that's really the same in any company in any in any industry. So whether it's network marketing, um, same thing goes for real estate brokers. Um, it really comes down to a good ten agents that make most of their income for them. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's not, or maybe five or six even. So it's, it really comes down to that. So if you can help them duplicate your process and you're willing to guide them, hold their hand for a little while and let them, and then let them start doing that for their downline, if you will, mm -hmm. then it becomes a very big deal. Uh, and now suddenly you are duplicating the process. You've done it online. Back to mm -hmm. the beginning of our conversation. You've done it online, not just belly to belly. You've used some of the belly to belly principles if you're doing events um, or you haven't ever done a live event and you've just done webinars either way mm -hmm. you're able to create those conversations um, through a marketing funnel mm -hmm. and whether you're doing paid advertising or you're crazy like me and likes to test all the hard stuff <laughs> so, by the way paid advertising is probably the easiest way if you're willing to spend money that's got to be the easiest way to get leads it's like here Facebook I need my people <laughs> well I think um, you know I was hesitant as a newbie at it a couple of years ago. I literally thought I was going to either break Facebook or lose my shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I'd be like, here's all my money. I don't know how to find my leads, but really once you set that limit, um, you know, testing and using $15 a day and you can shut it off within like a week and a half, you'd get some good data. And you went at it like a scientist and like, I wonder what's going to happen this way. And you just kind of want to put maybe even the same ad in front of different 
groups of people and Facebook will actually optimize it and the price goes down for the people that are you know responding really well to your ads and they're they're the ones that are raising their hand and saying I think I'm into you you know in the if it, we were comparing it like dating it'd be the dude that's like um I think I like you you know it's the same yeah. thing on Facebook ads it's really your audience is kind of saying hey that's me you're talking to me you made this message for me um, and Facebook ads are cheaper on video. So if you're doing Facebook lives, it's easy to throw an ad out to that and see who is digging it. Um, and then with, you know, higher technology that you could end up, you know, outsourcing or something like that, if you didn't know it yourself, um, they can throw on what's called a pixel and you can end up tracking and kind of gaining an, an audience that, that really likes you and you can end up, putting ads in front of that same types of people. So if you think of your best business builder and you're like, man, I wish I had 15 of her, then you can actually, you know, gain through attraction marketing 15 of her because they like the same types of things or they're the same, you know, cut from the same cloth, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Birds of a fe feather flock together. So yeah, they, uh, um, if that person, if her is 35 to 45 years old, lives in California, North California near LA, or, or I don't even know if that's North, but let's say lives in LA, mm -hmm. um, has three children, makes about $70,000 uh, a year, and is interested in fitness, nutrition, Oprah, and whatever else. Facebook will yes. only target that person that I just described and yes. you can get it to a zip code. So if you are going to hold a live event, why would you go hand out a bunch of flyers, which I know people do compared to putting an ad that is in a 30 mile radius of your event mm -hmm. and then only targeting the people that would like that event and then letting everyone see it. That would be much more effective and less exhausting. <laughs> and, and cheaper if you do that compared to like, okay, I'm going to go hand out flyers at, um, I think my, I've done this. So I'm kind of teasing myself here. Let's go to the gyms and see if they'll put our flyers on their countertops. Right. And right. The salons and let's, let's, let's put a little, let's see if we, we'll get this nice printed and graphic design brochure thing that we can hand out. And we've done all of that. And man, that's just a waste of time. It's terrible. It's terrible. And um, embarrassingly enough, I will, I will jump on this train with you. Um, years ago, uh, I was with a network marketing company that wasn't the right opportunity for me. And they kind of promoted doing things like that. And I had a bunch of flyers made. I hired somebody to go put it on cars at the mall and they'll kick you out of the mall for that. Yeah. <laughs> they do not want... <laughs> Mall cars yeah. flyered, and I'm like, with people on Facebook, you have to realize that if you went dress shopping recently online, and that dress is stalking you, so you're now all of a sudden you're seeing it on every site going, and they're like, "Did you buy it yet?" You know, and you're like, "Man, that dress is just keep re reminding me of it. Like I'm trying to forget about that dress, and it is just still there." <laughs> That is called retargeting. Like they know what you like, you know, <laughs> they are stalking you until you give in until payday Friday. And you're like, I can't. <laughs> yeah, they are stalking you. No, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the mall thing. That is hilarious. We've, uh, we've had a gym call us up and threaten. Like, if you do that again, we're going to have to like file a suit. Meaning we've put flyers on the cars in their parking lot. <laughs> and then also we put, um, um, we made those yard signs, you know, that real estate agents will use. Um, you put the little corrugated plastic yard signs, like they have little yes. things. They're cheap, but you can buy a bunch of those. We had a bunch of those made. To, these are for live events, by the way. So just the same thing. And we're putting them in the, the ground and all of a sudden we get a call from the police officer of the city. Hey, you can't be putting these. You're going to need to take them all down. And it was like 80 of them. And so oh, we're wow. drive around, find, and we didn't even remember where we put them. <laughs> so, 
You're like, we're offending people. We don't even know where it is. All this stuff that you go through the trouble just to get people to show up your event when now Facebook or any kind of online thing will just do it for people in a convenient way. Exactly. This is why you guys need this episode is because of the things that he and I have both learned. Um, I'll give you one other funny story before we sign off. Um, my very first network marketing experience was I, I knew at age 18, I was an entrepreneur. I just didn't know how to utilize it. I'd gone to school for business before I went into medicine and I partnered with these people that were out in LA and it was a health and wellness company and they just really like sold me on their biggest package and they were really about, um, you know, that instant gratification instead of nurturing somebody who could have be a great entrepreneur, but we all have those hard experiences, but it was hilarious because I grew up in the state of Maine and they keep things very, very natural. They're all about that. And these people were from LA and they told me to go rent a billboard sign <laughs> for an advertisement. And I was like, I'm in Maine. They don't allow billboards. And they're like so confused. They're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, like there's, we, no, billboards. <laughs> there's no billboards here. That's not even allowed in the state, you know? So this is why you need this episode because it's going to teach you the skills you need to be able to just jump on Facebook live, either throw an ad to it or a call to action of, you know, even if you did something super simple, like email me at this and you put your email, that's a good start. Mm -hmm. But we'll also include some uh, notes in here of like how to set up your first email list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's really simple tools. Um, by the way, if you're thinking it's going to cost a bunch of money to get started, it costs zero. So um, one, there's email tools that Lisa can list that are absolutely free um, mm -hmm. up to a certain point. But even then, um, we're talking thousands of people on your list before you ever pay them a dime. Okay. Right. So when you have a thousand or more, or actually a several thousand of people on your list, you're going to make money and it's, it's just pay for your tools. Right. Yes. And then there's what's called these landing page tools, which are just like the online web page tools. Um, there's some of those that you can use, or if you have a few extra dollars and you're just one of those super tech overwhelmed, like I don't know technology, that's fine. Just Spend a few dollars, like $100, $200 to have somebody set up a landing page for you. Not a big deal. It's not like you have to spend thousands of dollars on this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I would just recommend you learn it, though, because if you can just learn the basics of marketing, um, that's what business is. Yes. That's, that's what we're in. We're in the game of marketing, and marketing is all about how many people can you reach and influence. That's really what it is. Right. If you're not trying to reach and influence more people then I'm not sure what business you're in. <laughs> so. Exactly. Well, a lot of people um, with network marketing fell in love with a product and they didn't mean to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. So I've heard of the term accidental entrepreneur, which I love. Yeah. Um, so it's really just using resources like this to pick up marketing skills. And if you can learn Microsoft Word, you can learn these other services and just instead of like thinking you have to learn it all at once or something, don't let yourself get overwhelmed and just sort of, you know, take a half an hour a day and learn and go through that company's free videos on like how to put things together, how to put a newsletter together. It's literally as easy as Microsoft word, but it just, probably like Microsoft Word, there's buttons in there that you, it took you a few clicks to get to that you're like, oh, that would have saved me time knowing a long time ago. Yeah. I think we all understand there's a learning curve to anything, to any mm -hmm. skill, even if the learning curve's a day or an hour, right? But you mm -hmm. have to go through that kind of pain of learning it. Um, I just call it the click curve. So you've got to <laughs> learn. It's because tools these days, I don't know a thing of code. I've never, in all the tools we use to build our clients' funnels, um, mm -hmm. over the 800 funnels you mentioned at the beginning of this call, those were used with drag and drop tools, which means you're pointing and clicking and dragging it over and dropping it and saying, yeah, that looks good. <laughs> and so 
if that's what you can do, the only thing you're trying to learn is where do I click to drag? Mm -hmm. That's it. So as soon as you're willing to just walk through some tutorials and say, oh, that button means this, okay, then you're good. You don't have to be a programmer. You don't even have to know what um, uh, a website looks like or feels like on the back end with all the weird code. It's all done for you. You don't mm -hmm. have to worry about that. So that's what I love about it because I am not one of those tech people. I don't know. I tried learning code once. I thought I was learning like Japanese. I didn't know. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Well, you know, if you're ready to build your business to multiple six figures or seven figures, then it'd be a good option to consult someone like Brent to do a funnel for you, say if you're gonna get overwhelmed by all the technology or something like that. So if you ever wanted to reach out to him, what's the best way to reach you? You know what, just go to my website, brentattaway.com, B-R-E-N-T-A-T-T-A-W-A-Y, I'm sure you can list it in there, but that's the way, the easiest way is just, we can just connect, even if it's on Facebook or whatever, mm -hmm. and we can start a conversation that way. But, yeah, that would be the best way. Awesome. Thank you so much for today. I've had such a great interview with you. Oh, you're welcome. And thanks for having me, Lisa.